I've seen iceberg videos all over YouTube for artists like Tyler Crater, Death Grips, Kanye West, but no iceberg video on this platform for Frank Ocean. So as a avid Reddit user, I typed into the Frank Ocean subreddit, Frank Ocean Iceberg, and I tried to look for the best one I could find. And I really think this might be the best Frank Ocean Iceberg. So welcome back to the Kill Ivan Show. Get some popcorn, get something to drink, because this is going to be a very long video. And we're doing a Frank Ocean Iceberg. <laughs> First of all, before I even start the video, I want to shout out Reddit user Kento Pento for dropping this in the Frank Ocean subreddit. I'll be using most of this person's iceberg. I did add a few things because while researching this video, there's been some additional Frank Ocean news like him announcing a album on a poster from his Blunted merch, a cryptic message in it. So that will be added too. So there's a lot of new things that happened with Frank Ocean recently, like the vinyl and everything. So that will be added into the iceberg. And also this video took me a lot of time, a lot of research. So make sure to subscribe, like the video if you like it. And when you subscribe, also hit the bell notification to be notified every time I drop and the link in the description for all my socials. Make sure to follow me on IG. Pretty much I'm active on every social media. Now, what's an iceberg for people that don't know? No, it's not that big block of ice melting because of climate change. It's basically a chart that sorts facts and theories from a piece of media by obscurity, usually at the top, the most commonly known facts, and at the bottom, the most obscure facts that, you know, like really OG fans or even not even OG fans, it's just like so obscure and so niche that most people just don't know about it. And trust me, in this iceberg, the lower you go to the abyss, more weird and obscure the Frank Ocean facts kind of get, which the last one I'm going to speak about is like so so bad like there's one at the end like it's like why it's so bad it's like really bad so let's get into it we're gonna dive into some frank ocean facts and i'm not even gonna lie to you getting closer to like level four five and of course the abyss six there's a lot of things like I, I i pride myself being like a huge frank ocean fan and i had no idea like no idea i had to do research for some of these facts like it was so weird and so obscure and so like just like why <laughs> you know but um Let's get into it, guys. I'm telling you, if you watch this whole video, you're pretty much going to know everything there is to know about Frank Ocean. And like I said, I also added some facts, um, some obscure things that I feel like people didn't know about. And also, of course, some new Frank Ocean news that happened that I think should be in this iceberg. Now, without any further ado, let's get into this iceberg. Knight's Beach Switch. I mean, I feel like everybody, if you've listened to Blonde, you know about this. But basically, the Knight's Beach Switch defines a literal change in mood of the whole album. I'm talking about Knight's till the beginning when you're with Nikes, from Knight's to the end for Future of Free. Like, the middle point when the beat switch changes just the whole mood of the album. You know this. Like, the first half of Blonde does not sound like the last half of Blonde. Also, that transition, that beat switch, is the halfway mark of the album. This album is one hour, and that's exactly 30 minutes. So in a lot of articles and analysis of the song, really that beat switch is not just a beat switch, but a turning point in the album, a mid mark of the album, a changing in the mood and the sentiment of the album and what a hell of a beat switch it is. Homer. Basically, Homer is an independent American luxury company founded by Frank Ocean. And you've seen the jewelry. Listen, when it first dropped Homer, a lot of fans, Frank Ocean fans were not really happy because it felt for a lot of fans that, you know, his fan base is a lot of people that don't necessarily, you know, have money to afford for buying $25,000 cock ring. So a lot of people were kind of disappointed in Frank, but I did have the chance myself to go to New York and visit the store. Very beautiful layout of the jewelry. The jewelry, in my personal opinion, I think looks pretty cool. I would love to cop some one day, but um, it's a little bit above my price range. But that's basically um, what Homer is. Green hair. So on the main blonde cover for Frank Ocean's album Blonde, Frank Ocean is sporting green hair. And I've made a video about this song about the three different art covers for Blonde. And part where I specifically talk about the picture that was, you know, framed at the MoMA, the one taken by Wolfgang Tillmans. I explained why Frank Ocean's hair was green. You know, a lot of people, when they grow older, and I explained this in my video, you know, their hair starts to gray. You know, when they're younger, their hair is a little lighter. As they grow older, their hair becomes darker to becoming gray. And I think that Blonde represents a lot for the past and you know what people do when they want to still look young they dye their hair and I think Frank Ocean was longing for the past wanted to have his hair blonde bring back those past moments and he failed and dyed it green so um, I think it's this chase for the past is reminiscing of a past so that's why Frank Ocean's hair is blonde and if you ever you know try to dye your hair blonde and you missed um yeah it can turn green Blonde. Blonde is the second studio album by Frank Ocean. It was released on August 20, 2016. At that time, it was a Apple Music and iTunes Store exclusive. And is the album that followed the August 19 release of Frank Ocean's Endless. Now the album can be spelled Blonde without an E and Blonde with an E representing the duality. And this is one of the most cherished albums of the 2010s. And 
yeah, I mean, that's pretty much blonde. If you like Frank Ocean, you pretty much know what this fact is. Sexuality. Early in the morning of July 4, 2012, Frank Ocean took to his Tumblr to post a personal statement in which he opens up about his sexuality. Yeah, he's bisexual, and a lot of people seem to not notice. Like, a lot of my friends, when I talk about Frank Ocean and I, you know, explain, you know, songs like Think About You that he's talking about a man or see him on both sides like Chanel, people are like, wait, he's bi? They have no clue. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, again, it doesn't really matter what sexuality is. I do think that it's interesting that he brings that into his songs, his sexuality and playing on words, you know, seeing both sides like Chanel and stuff like that. I think it's really incredible that he's able to, you know, put that in the forefront of his music. And yeah, he's, he's bi oldie verse so frank ocean had a verse on a 2011 art future track which is one of the greatest posse cuts of all time oldie and this song if i'm not mistaken dropped before he did his open letter um where he detailed that you know he his first love was a man and he actually had a verse where he says i'm high and i'm by oh wait i mean i'm straight uh, which is a, what a dope line i did a tiktok about this explaining the verse but what a dope line like like it's so much like play on words like he's a really 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 dope with with his wordplay and um I, I just love the verse like to see frank ocean rap on a track like i thought he hold his he held his own i think still our uh, earl sweatshirt and, and tyler grady have the best verse but frank ocean is like up there it was dope it was a dope dope video frank ocean can't rap so we just talked about the oldies verse but um some people think he can't rap um he has multiple songs in my room dhl the oldies verse was amazing blue whale he has a lot of songs where he raps he's an incredible rapper and that's pretty much it yeah he, he can't rap and i hope his next album he raps a lot on it i want to hear that also yeah future free raps on it too oh and i forgot also raf his verse on raf is so dope and sunday when he talks about how chris brown beat him up his verse like it's super dope so yeah he, he can rap he can rap think about you frank ocean was basically talking about a man everybody thought that thing about you was about a woman he was talking about a man what a beautiful song talking about that summer he fell in love everything was orange and he was 19 and he fell in love with a man on the art cover for thing about you it's not frank ocean on it i always thought it was him for like the longest time it's not him and also there's this viral video that was on vine you know back then and some kids said a potato flew around my room before you came <laughs> that video is amazing uh i'll play it for sure a potato flew around my room before you came excuse and that's pretty much it Chris Brown beef. On January 27, 2013, in the parking lot of Los Angeles, there was an altercation between Frank Ocean and Chris Brown. An incident report stated that Chris Brown threw a punch at Frank Ocean after Frank Ocean accused Chris Brown of having taken his designated parking spot. He really beefed because of a parking spot. Regardless, Frank Ocean's cousin claimed that he was also attacked by a member of Chris Brown's entourage during the incident. Thankfully, charges were dropped with Frank Ocean stating on his Tumblr that he was choosing sanity, no criminal charges, no civil lawsuit. At least he beat him at the Grammys. And on future free frank ocean actually talks about how jay-z told him to you know act his net worth regarding that beef with chris brown just don't escalate it there's actually a gruesome picture of you know frank ocean with a cut on his hand that's when he was fighting with chris brown so that blonde bandage on his finger from blonde yeah that's because he fought chris brown def jam record and apple music finesse frank ocean took four years between you know channel orange and blonde and i mean when he dropped channel orange everybody was foaming out of the mouth like Everybody was like, this guy's next level. I can't wait what he has the next in store for us. And, you know, we had radio silence for four years. And finally, in 2016, he reappeared with the visual album Endless. And a day after, the 17th song album Blonde released as an Apple Music exclusive. A day later on their his own label, Boys Don't Cry, without Dev Jam's or Universal's involvement. It's actually in August of 2016, Frank Ocean executed his intricate plan, which he had thought through for two years to perfection. At 3 a.m., an unusual stream of Ocean woodworking in a warehouse in Brooklyn appeared on his website with an Apple Music logo. The stream went on for another 140 hours. As the live stream continued on, it became clear to viewers that he was building a staircase. Near the completion of the staircase, the video suddenly gets a soundtrack. You can hear Frank Ocean's voice sing a beautiful rendition of Aaliyah's At Your Best, Your Love. And that's how Endless, the video album, was released. Frank later on came out saying that the Endless visual album represents a final move in his seven years chess game with Dev Jam to get out of his contract by paying back the $2 million advance the label gave him for the completion of the second album he was able to retain ownerships of the records. A day later, Frank Ocean independently released a music video to his song, Nikes, which was shortly followed by the release of the album Blonde a few hours later. Finally being out of his contract with Dev Jam, Frank Ocean was able to keep the rights to Blonde and by releasing it through Apple Music, he secured all profits. The album stormed the charts, entering at the number one spot of the Billboard 200 charts. It's actually rumored that Frank Ocean netted $2 million in sales alone, all that in his pockets. Ocean later revealed in an interview that none of his friends whom he had shared his plans with believed that it would work out. However, by working through with the plan over and over again until it was impeccable, he managed to prove them all wrong. Even though it was a pain to wait such a long time for the creative masterpieces that are blonde and endless, Frank 
Fortune has demonstrated that taking his time with projects and never rushing things always pays off in the end. Yeah, he finessed the heck out of um, those record labels and um, good up for him. And I still don't know why he's not dropping an album like in the past seven years because it's like you're independent now. You can like do whatever you want. So drop music, man. I don't know. Second layer channel orange channel orange actually i'm really happy the person that made iceberg on reddit actually put channel orange as second layer because a lot of people just gloss over channel orange okay like dude it's his first project um well first album official studio album and it's better than blonde it's so next level like the music like the production the songwriting the stories oh my god i could talk hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours about channel orange but i will spare you that and we'll just get into the facts so January orange was frank ocean's debut studio album and it was released on july 10th 2012 it was actually released a little early to prevent it from being leaked to the internet def jam actually released that album digitally a week earlier then it was publicly announced to be released it was actually promoted with five singles and actually had a supporting tour in July of 2012 and at the 2013 Grammy Awards Channel Orange was nominated for the album of the year and won the best urban contemporary album since then it has garnered universal critical acclaim it's a beloved project and if you're wondering the title is a reference to the neurological phenomenon grapheme color synesthesia through which he had perceived the color orange during the summer he first fell in love and that's why he saw everything orange it also is him flipping through channels because you hear him flipping through channels and the channel he's flipping through is orange it's also to channel orange you know like channeling something you know channeling like key like energy you know like chakra he's channeling orange so i guess he's channeling love what a great album man <laughs> blonded.co it's his website he i mean i think nike's released on the website also and you know he drops merch on that you know drop the repressing of the vinyl and i mean that's pretty much all i got to say you get stuff it used to be maybe like blog posts on it a bit like 2016 when he showed the um, library card with you know release dates for the album but yeah you can you can get merch pretty much it <laughs> blonded repressing he repressed the blonde album and it sold like crazy and um i haven't received it yet and i'm pissed that's it <laughs> Frank Ocean's Tumblr account. This is actually the only reason why I got a Tumblr account was because Frank Ocean was on Tumblr. He actually kept his own Tumblr page running since its first post on September 2nd, 2010. He has used the platform to share some content he finds interesting and voices thoughts like how he hates the Grammys. He also shares pictures and discusses and shares his own music. 2020 and 2021 were the first years actually where he didn't post anything. Chanel. Frank Ocean released his first solo music since the albums Blonde and Endless. That song was Chanel. He premiered a song on the second episode of his Blonde Radio show, A Friday Evening, shortly after featuring on Calvin Harris's track, Slide, alongside the Migos. Frank Ocean also made two Tumblr posts to accompany the track's release, one featuring art with the fashion brand's famous logo and another showing the song's lyrics in an interesting pattern. A version of the song featuring ASAP Rocky was also played on Beats 1. And I remember when it dropped, I was actually going to go to Florida um, the day after and imagine a whole track team full of grown men singing, my guy's pretty like a girl. Yeah, he had us in a chokehold. Nike's. Nike was actually released on August 20th, 2016 as a lead single for a second studio album, Blonde. It was accompanied by a music video directed by Tyron LeBon and it was exclusive to Apple Music. It is Ocean's first single since Super Rich Kids which was released back in 2013. Frank Ocean wrote the song producing it alongside Malay O and Omas Keith and also the former Dirty Projectors vocalist Amber Kaufman contributed additional vocals. Blonded Radio and also the GTA Blonded Radio. Blonded Radio is Frank Ocean's Apple Music One radio show it usually airs new singles from Frank Ocean each episode. A fictional radio station based on the show titled Blonded Los Santos 97.8 was added to the video game Grand Theft Auto 5 in December 2017 and I just want to bunch into that also Homer Radio which is on Thursdays from even I'm sick in 10 to 11 where he brings a mix of you know songs that you know they're probably listening to in the Homer office with you know a very huge variety of different sounds it's pretty cool he has never released music out of it but um it's cool to see what Frank Ocean listening to or his friends or people that I work with are listening to Nostalgia Ultra. Nostalgia Ultra is the debut mixtape by Frank Ocean. It was released on February 16, 2011. Frank Ocean was actually inspired to make the mixtape after Hurricane Katrina hit his native New Orleans and forced his subsequent relocation to Los Angeles. After joining Odd Future in 2010, he self-released the mixtape without any initial promotion. And also, the cover features a picture of a bright orange BMW E30 M3, Frank Ocean's dream car, and <laughs> my freaking dream car. In May of 2011, Def Jam announced its plans to release the mixtape as an EP on July 20. 6, 2011. However, the release of the EP was indefinitely delayed on July of 2011 and has since been cancelled. Two singles were released from the EP, Novocaine and Good. Both songs received music videos directed by Australian director Nabil 
Alderton. Ocean embarked on a solo concert tour through North America and Europe to promote the record, playing a total of seven shows. In addition, his 2012 performance at the Coachella Music Festival included several renditions from Nostalgia Ultra, including Strawberry Swing and Love Crimes. Unfortunately, the mixtape had a lot of controversy, and I detailed it on a YouTube video talking about why the Eagles hate Frank Ocean. The Eagles tried to Frank Ocean because of the song American Wedding that heavily uses the instrumental and also the melody of Hotel California by the Eagles. Don Henley hates Frank Ocean. He called him a prick. He hates him. Yeah. But at least the Soldier Ultra was able to garner the attention from Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Kanye West, who then invited Frank Ocean, you know, to help them with Watch the Throne and for Beyonce to help her with her album four with the song I Miss You that he wrote. Slide. Slide is a song by Calvin Harris featuring Frank Ocean and the Migos. It was a lead single for his fifth studio album, Funk Wave Bounces, Volume 1. It was released on February 23rd, 2017 through Sony Music. And let me tell you right now, if that was a song of the summer, it was... I, I don't know how Calvin Harris was able to mix Frank Ocean and the Migos and make it sound so damn good, but oh my god, like, I had this... In 2017, it had me in a trouble. I was listening to this every single day. And I don't know if you had the chance to listen to Frank Ocean sing it without, you know, um, you know, the instrumentals, just a cappella kind of. Um, yeah, he has the voice of an angel. What a song. Ryan Bro's Death. Deputies responded to a call of smoke in the area of Skelton Canyon Circle around 1.30 a.m. When police officials arrived, the vehicle was engulfed in flames, and the two occupants of the car were unfortunately pronounced dead at the scene. The vehicle was severely damaged and got hit by a tree before being cut in half. Frank Ocean's younger brother, um, Ryan Bro, was pronounced dead at 18, killed in a car crash on August 2nd, 2020. May his soul rest in peace. Um, I I wouldn't know what to do if that was my brother. Um, yeah, that news hit the Frank Ocean community crazy, um, and I, I don't know. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say on this. Recruited Earl into Alt Future. So, um, I did all the research I could like there's like two facts that I did there's like so much research but I can couldn't find really anything about it this this one and another one and it says that Frank Ocean recruited early on future but I don't see that anywhere and what really happened is more like Tyler Crater in 2009 found Earl off of MySpace when he used to go by the name Slide Tendencies and recruit him to Art Future because he liked how he rapped that's pretty much it so yeah Cayendo Cayendo is a song by Frank Ocean, released as a 7-inch single on March 25th, 2020. It consists of an acoustic version as a side A and a remix by Sango as a side B. The acoustic version was released on digital platforms on April 3rd, and the track in English translates to Falling in My Room. This song is my jam. It's a single released on November 2nd, 2019. Frank Ocean wrote and produced the song alongside Michael Ozoruru. It was premiered on Frank Ocean's Beats 1 radio show, Blonde Radio. Two weeks after DHL, the 7-inch single vinyl is set to include a remix by Benny Revival as its B-side. The song features Frank Ocean rapping and crooning over a looped synth line and a simple beat. I love the song and I, I hope you know we, we have some of this on the next album. And also I love when he raps. Um, it's super dope. Prep Plus. Frank Ocean named an exclusive party after an HIV prevention drug, paying homage to what the New York 80s and 90s club scene could have been if the HIV prevention drug Prep had been invented. It's also at these parties that he debuted the new singles like Little Demon. Layer 3. Frank Ocean announces album on poster. So Frank Ocean released Blonde and Merch going alongside with the repressing of the blonde vinyl and t-shirts and posters. And on the posters, there was a cryptic message explaining what Frank Ocean has been doing since the release of Blonde till now and how he wanted to get more into releasing only singles and abandoning the album format, but decided finally to go against it due to the pandemic and the canceling of some shows that he parties he wanted to raise that he wanted to, to promote the songs that he was going to release. With this, um, it actually made my one of my most popular YouTube videos ever, where like 100k, you know, views. For a lot of people, this is coming of like a album announcement, and I'm really excited to see what he has in store for us. He came out to Tyler the Creator first. So Tyler the Creator says that actually Frank Ocean came out to him first. And there's a picture um, that I'm actually going to show on another um, fact a little bit deeper into the iceberg, but um, it has to do with unfrosted pop tarts. Little Demon. At the Prep Pubs Club Nights, the song Little Demon was played, a new collab with Skepta. On Sunday, during Frank Ocean's Blonde Radio Show on Beats 1, a pre-order launched for a new 7-inch single called Little Demon, which featured an Arca remix on its B-side that was played during one of the Prep Pubs shows, was played as well. Shortly after the pre-order launched, Frank Ocean debuted the remix of Little Demon on the show, which also featured Skepta. 
Ocean 16. Basically, Ocean 16 is just a fake Frank Ocean account that released two very old Frank Ocean songs. They're over a decade old. I made a YouTube video about this. I made a TikTok video about this. Um, it was We All Try and Miss You So. We All Try, which is on Nostalgia Ultra, Miss You So, which is on the Lonely Bro collection, which is a fan-made collection, and is a song that actually he doesn't even own. It's a reference track. It's Connor Maynard that owns the song, and it's pretty much it. Frank Ocean's love for video games. Frank Ocean's love for video games dates back to the days of the Dreamcast playing Street Fighter. You can hear this in Nostalgia Ultra and has developed into a fully fledged radio show in one of the biggest titles of all time, GTA 5. You can even go to Channel Orange. On the first track of Channel Orange, start, Frank Ocean begins the album off in a smoky atmosphere as a PlayStation 1 startup sound smoothly chimes in. Just as he did with Nostalgia Ultra, he references Street Fighter this time sampling sounds from the game's character selection menu. And actually, Frank Ocean, when he performed on SNL, he was playing video games at the end of his songs. So, I mean, the dude loves video games. Lens version 2. There's actually a second version of Frank Ocean's Lens and it features Travis Scott. It was actually premiered on the fourth episode of Frank Ocean's Beats 1 radio show, Blonder Radio. And also having two versions of lenses marks another chapter of Frank Ocean's infamous I Got Two Versions riff and it continues exploration of duality. Paris's Burning Party. On Frank Ocean's 30th birthday, the editor received a gift it didn't even know it needed. Grainy footage of Frank Ocean decked out in some seriously bejeweled tights, stopping the runway in a walk-off with former RuPaul's Drag Race contestant Gia Gunn. This was just one of many videos which surfaced online from Frank Ocean's Paris's Burning Party. Frank Ocean eats pop tarts with no frosting. I'm just gonna show the picture. I'll give you some time to read the quote. Yeah, Tyler Crater. <laughs> what a guy. Dear April. Dear April is a song released as a 7 inch single on March 25th, 2020, consisting of an acoustic version as a side A and a remix by Justice as a side B. And dear Lord, that remix is good! The acoustic version was released digitally on April 3rd and was written and produced by Ocean and Daniel Aged. What a beautiful song. DHL. And DHL has my vinyl. They still have it up to the day. Before I even get into this, DHL, give me my goddamn vinyl and tell me when it's gonna arrive in my crib, man. God damn. DHL was released as a single on October 19, 2019. The track was premiered on Frank Ocean's Blonded Radio. Its release followed the day after Frank Ocean announced the track Kayendo and Dear April. Nike's Feet Ko. Cool. There's actually an alternate version to Nike's where the closing verse is performed by Japanese rapper Ko and is only featured on the CD that was included in the version of the Boys Don't Cry magazine that was given away at various pop-up shops on the day Blonde was released. I got two versions. After a four-year musical drought, Frank Ocean unleashed a barrage of projects from his own one-of-a-kind mind to albums, Endless and Blonde, a magazine, Boys Don't Cry, and a music video for his song Nikes. In the latter, a low-pitched ocean croaks, I got two versions, a deceptively vague riff that echoes the 2015 Tumblr post in which he first teased his mag. What exactly does Frank's double talk mean? We have Endless and Blonde, Endless being on the label, Blonde being free it's an independent project there's a duality between those and also the sound of endless the sound of blonde endless is like this ambience music that just keeps on going while blonde is a clear division between the night's beat switch for you know the first half of the project till the second half that could be his two versions blonde versus blonde this duality his bisexuality man I mean blonde for women blonde for men the e like is there an e blonde with an e blonde without an e that could be the duality there's two versions there's also you know the blonde with press vinyl with the black one having blonde with the E and the white original version no E. It could also be the alternate versions of Nikes. I mean first of all I think there's like multiple versions of Nikes. There's the one with the video where Frank Ocean says I got two versions. I got two versions and he says you know shout out to the slip and slide dynasty. Like yo first of all like the chopped and screwed version of Nikes that video. Oh my god we needed that as the original version. There's also the OG version on the album and there's also you know the version with has the rappers Cole rapping at the end of the song. There was also actually two track lists for Blonde that were released. Actually, in the magazine images, the album is sequenced differently. The book features songs, titles, and corresponding lyrics, Pretty Sweet, moved to the beginning, replacing into Nikes. Meanwhile, unreleased songs like Mitsubishi, Sony, and Easy are slotted in as track two and six, respectively. Be Yourself, Self Control, Good Guy, Close to You, Facebook Story, and Andre 3000 Showcase Solar Reprise are all omitted as well. Could be also Frank's cars. On the Nikes music video, he has different cars. There were two McLaurins, bass model, Model and a long tailed model. That could be it. I mean, I don't know. I'm broke. I'm, I can't afford those. And also, when he says in Nike's video, I got two versions. I mean, in the video, you see him depicting two statues of the Virgin Mary, followed by two schoolgirls. Yikes. Two versions could be a reference to John Legend and Yoko Ono's experimental 1968 album, Unfinished Music Number no. One. Two versions. Frank credits Lennon's group, The Beatles, in the album's liner notes. Layer 4. 
SZA's song cover, The Weeknd. On Frank Ocean's Instagram in 2019, he unveiled a snippet of his own cover of SZA's The Weeknd. I remember when I saw that story and I listened to his version, now it had me in a chokehold. Oh God, it had me in a chokehold. That was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Voodoo is End. End is actually the closer track to Frank Ocean's widespread acclaim album, Channel Orange. Well, actually, there's a bonus song that is Golden Girl that is actually on physical copies of Channel Orange featuring Tyler Crater, but on the digital version that you can find on Spotify, it's End, which is actually a song called Voodoo that you can find on the Frank Main Project Undocumented Rare, where you hear the song Voodoo that sounds like End because, well, End is Voodoo. And although not confirmed by Frank Ocean himself, the song is actually theorized to be inspired by a scene from the 2000 six film ATL which features characters Nunu and Rashad exchanging conversation in a similar setting. The song plays during conversation pouring rain in car chimes of Frank's BMW X6 that he had owned at the time. Night's extended demo. Now the song quality if you look it up the song quality is not really good but yo there's some interesting things he did in that demo. There's actually a low quality recording leaked online on June 7th 2018. According to the person who caused the song to enter circulation the song was previewed by Frank to Kendrick Lamar and his producer a few months before Blonde was released. It's unknown who made the recording. The earlier version contains a further two verses from Frank Ocean with a more positive lyrical outlook. The track ends following the guitar solo rather than it signaling the beat switch that is seen on the final release. He legally changed his name. Well I mean, his stage name was Frank Ocean, but he legally changed his name to actually Frank Ocean because actually his government name, which is not Frank Ocean, but his birth name is Christopher Edwin Bro. And he legally changed his name on March of 2014. He hates the Grammys. When Kendrick Lamar lost to Taylor Swift's 1989, Kendrick Lamar having to be a butterfly for album of the year, Frank Ocean went on a rant on Tumblr and I can just agree with him. And if you want to read the rant, here it is. And I can also link it down in the description. Nights featuring Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar actually was supposed to have a feature on Nights. And this is how the verse goes. Um, I'll play the verse, but if YouTube doesn't allow it, I will um, unfortunately take it down and link it down in the description. What's our philosophy? Ooh, nanny, nanny. Yeah. No bitch. Triple nine. www.thesource.to Undocumented Rare is a Frank Ocean stand's best resource for unreleased tracks not included in the Lonely Bro collection. The tape was compiled with everything else featuring Lonely Bro or Frank Ocean in the years spanning 2010 to 2015, including a few features and remixes that you can't purchase anywhere. The best audio has been sourced for each track and each have been tagged with the year they were released online if not recorded. The release has 42 tracks that include reference tracks, snippets, remixes, and all of the tracks Frank released on his Tumblr account. Each track has clean metadata including lyrics and alternate art poem included in the folder. Frank Ocean's beef with the Eagles. I actually made a YouTube video about this. I'll link it up somewhere in the video. I'll link it down in the description. But basically, yeah, um, Frank Ocean made a song called American Wedding on Nostalgia Ultra and it takes the melody and the instrumental of Hotel California by the Eagles and Don Henley hates Frank Ocean and thinks he's a prick. Um, if you want more information, make sure to check out my video. Chipotle Legal Battle. In March of 2014, Frank Ocean was set to perform a cover song of Pure Imagination in the Chipotle Mexican Grill. The commercial, which was due to promote responsible farming, following a review of the final storyboard, Frank Ocean's team sent Chipotle a letter explaining that they felt obligated to withdraw from the arrangement. Knowing that Frank Ocean was asked to participate in this project, Chipotle's representative told him that the trust of the campaign was to promote responsible farming. There was no Chipotle reference or logo in the initial presentation, and Chipotle told Frank Ocean that there was an intentional element of the campaign. Frank Ocean effectively honored the arrangement by repaying Chipotle via cashier's check in the sum of over $200,000. The commercial titled The Scarecrow was subsequently released with Fiona Apple performing the song. Layer 5, Kanye West on White Ferrari. Back in the day, there was actually a Frank Ocean kind of fact or rumor circulating that Kanye West actually had asked Frank Ocean to help him with his album. Frank Ocean told him, no, he wants to do it on himself, which is kind of debunked now because Kanye West actually has writing credits on Blonde and on White Ferrari, which is the best song on Blonde. There's a specific part where you hear love and a lot of people think it's Chance the Rapper. Some people think it's Frank Ocean, but a lot of people think it's Kanye West and he has writing credits specifically on that song. So yeah, Kanye West is featured on White Ferrari. Blue Whale. This is an album outtake from Frank Ocean produced by Pharrell Williams and it details his maturity, hometown, and rise to fame. It has a smooth vibe. Pharrell killed the song. If you scour the internet, you can find Blue Whale by Frank Ocean. It was released a little after Channel Orange and basically just talks about his life right now and what's happened ever since he dropped one of the greatest albums of all time. 
Bulls Don't Cry magazine. This was a magazine actually teased by Frank Ocean when he did that picture where he said he got two versions. And this magazine has contributions from the likes of Kanye West, ASAP Rocky, and Tyler the Creator with beautiful imagery. And I mean, these are kind of hard to get now and are very expensive, but I wish I had my hands on one back then. It's a beautiful magazine. I have a friend that showed it to me and I've, you know, scouted the internet to see some things. It's pretty cool. And Kanye West has like a poem where he talks about McDonald's. So yeah. Biking, Blonded.co version. So this is a version that was actually featured on the Frank Ocean's website, Blonded. And you get a verse by Tyler the Creator with an outro to the song where somebody is howling like it was a Death Grip song. And it's darker and it's a pretty cool video. And I, I, like, I like this version a lot. The Lonely Bro Collection. This is a 64 track project, well, made by fans, which is a regroupment of reference tracks, songs that Frank Ocean has given to other artists. And Frank Ocean doesn't want this to be out. I made a whole video about it. I'll link it somewhere in the video and down in the description. Just quickly, I probably will make a video about Frank Ocean writing for other artists in the future, but quickly I could say that there's songs that were there for Brandy, John Legend, Connor Maynard, like he's given a lot of songs. The only true song that he released that is really his on this project, he wrote is a cure and a girl that, like, that's official that's pretty much it um make sure to watch my video for more details frank ocean slaps nabil nabil is an incredible videographer that has made so many videos for frank ocean notably pyramids swim good and frank ocean after winning an award and making that video um because he couldn't attend the award ceremony goes on to slap the crap out of nabil and this is the video thank you for the win it means a lot to me oh Versace lyrics. On Tumblr, Frank Ocean posted lyrics to a remix version of Versace. And on that verse, Frank Ocean says, Versace, Versace, I'll play the piano. I'm not a Liberace. You could say I'm taking that Grammy. Your music is sloppy. What a... <laughs> <laughs> not a great verse but what a, a jab to chris brown but yeah frank ocean basically made a remix version to versace which was never released but you can read the lyrics on his tumblr page omas keith lawsuit frank ocean filed a lawsuit against music producer omas keith and his analog genius corporation alleging he wrongfully claimed songwriting credits for several songs of his 2016 project blonde in response to a counterclaim that was recently filed by omas keith in frank ocean's case ocean's attorney ed mcpherson of mcpherson rain llp gave the following statement. Chris Ocean stands behind everything that was alleged in the First Amendment complaint and we look forward to having the case heard by a judge and jury. We're confident that when the true facts are presented, Mr. Ocean will prevail. It is quite telling that on the list of the many songs that Mr. Keith claims to have co-written is a song called At Your Best, You Are Love, which was written and recorded by the Eiley Brothers in 1975 and covered by Leah in 1994. If I listen closely, I can hear the sky falling too. When Frank Ocean was writing his open letter on his Tumblr, there's a passage where it says, If I listen closely, I can hear the sky falling. The sky is falling is a saying which means the world's ending, made famous by the story of Henny Penny or Chicken Little, as it's commonly known. So Frank may be alluding to the fact that the world as we know currently, the social stigma behind being openly homosexual may be changing. This is not only as a result of his letter, but also as people become more open-minded. The listen closely is essentially Frank Ocean saying that there are currently small signs of it, and it hasn't happened on a large scale yet. Frank Ocean is a photographer. Um, I've made a video about this. I'm gonna link it down. But basically, I mean, when he was at the 2019 Met Gala, took pictures for Vogue. Um, he's owned a Contact G2, Contact C3, Fuji J645ZI. He's had so many numerous mythical film cameras. There's some of his photography on Boys Don't Cry on his Tumblr. He shares some of his photography. He's a pretty damn good photographer. He knows pretty damn good photographers. Check my video for more details, I guess. Layer six. Um, these are like really niche things and I think the last part of this is very dark. Falls an illegal civ video. And so there's a skateboard video, it's around an hour long. If you go and try to watch it on YouTube, actually they're gonna ask you your age um, because there's like videos of like Earl Swatches fighting and there's some, anyway, there's some legal stuff going on. Uh, regardless, there's just a part of it um, where Frank Ocean just falls. <laughs> yeah, he falls. Here's the video. Spike Jones Project. Well, it was said to say that Spike Jones was actually making a secret film project with Frank Ocean and Brad Pitt. We've seen nothing of this. Um, that's pretty much it. And there's also Frank Ocean with his 824 film that was supposed to come out. 824 film that's called Philly that might come out. We don't know much about it. I talked about it on TikTok. I did a you know YouTube short with it. Nothing much about that to say. Nothing has come out about these type of projects. I don't know. Who knows? Only time is going to tell. Ocean mixtapes. This is the second thing that I have no idea what it is. Like, no social ultra is only mixtape. If somebody knows about the Frank Ocean Ocean mixtapes, let me know. I have no idea what it is. Please let me know in the comments. I beg you. This is the only thing I could not find anything about. Like, literally, I searched for hours. His only mixtape is Nostalgia Ultra. Before that, these are Lonely Bro Collection. It's not even official mixtape. It's like something fan made. So I don't know. Like, I, I'm sorry. I just don't know.
Booty Club. A uh, longtime producer with Frank Ocean Melee actually teased a track that was going to release with Frank Ocean called Booty Club. And um, yeah, this never released. It wasn't really anything. Um, people thought it was an album. There was like a complex magazine, like whole, you know, article about this. But you know how Frank Ocean fans are. Every time we might hear music, we, you know, <laughs> make full on videos like I do right now about um, what it could be about. But yeah, Booty Club is nothing much. This might be the darkest and the last. This is the last one fact um the kidnap ryan bro um plot so frank ocean didn't release an album for a very long time and some fans on reddit if you can call them fans were plotting to kidnap ryan bro how stupid do you feel now and even ryan reacted to it and was like what the heck is going on that's terrible and that's pretty much it so um guys let me know in the comments did i miss anything on my frank ocean iceberg is there more you know dark secrets dark frank ocean facts that i didn't speak about let me know in the comments i want to i might make a part two if you can give me a lot more things to talk about and let me know if you like this video and also shout out everybody man that watched my video about frank ocean announcing the album um there were so many views thank you so much the comments were beautiful thank you so much and yeah and hopefully i hope i see some of y'all at coachella this you know year i'm going week one and guys um thanks so much for watching subscribe like comment like i said and as usual keep it supreme